Today I'm going to be talking to you about this monster mini boat, V-Twin, Harley Freight, Horrible Freight, whatever you want to call it, death trap type of mini boat thing that I got going on here. And hopefully this microphone works. And uh, happy 4th of July yesterday. Hope you were all safe. And if anybody's in the hospital due to this weekend, Comment below what happened, because I'm super interested. ATV crash, drunk driver incident, blew your hand off with a firecracker, whatever it is, I want to hear it. Anyways, while these uh, lives kind of get rolling, it's a little boring at the beginning. But uh, So I'm just going to kind of wipe some of this dust off and wait for some people to join, and you can behold what's behind me. I have kind of a list here of things that I want to talk about, so it should be worth your while to stick around. Yeah, it shouldn't be too wandering. So, there's a ton of dust on this thing. I just dusted most of it off yesterday and it's already dusty again. But it looks pretty horrible when it's this dirty. So here, you know. Okay. Why doesn't this glove work? Can you hear me well? So, uh, good morning, Bob. Can you hear me well? Does this mic work? You're the uh, first person to talk, so I'm gonna ask you a question. Yes, Loudrup and Clur. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I thought it would fit in. Um, let me do a real quick uh, mic test way over there. <clears throat> mic check, two, four, six. Mic check, one, three, five, seven. It works? Cool. Is it too loud or anything weird? Yes, I hear you. Hey, Dragons, Picks, Shane, how's it going? It's awesome, cool. All right, you can hear me too, Bob. You were the first one here. Okay, so I'm talking about this mini boat here, and I might not be able to read very many comments, and when I do, I sound very scatterbrained, so it's probably a good thing. But I got some, a lot more going on with this than you might expect, so I'm gonna go through some of that real quick. Once again, I hope everybody had a good holiday weekend. All right, first thing I'm going to talk about is fuel. Now, these uh, V-twin motors, they don't come with a gas tank on top like the, little, uh, the other little Predators. And so I have to have my own gas tank. And you can see so much weight in the back here. And my weight's gonna be pretty much center. So I feel like I want most of my weight to be forward and away from fire for this gas tank that I got. So I either need to drill a hole in the top and mount it on top, which would be pretty ugly, or put it under here and drill a bigger hole for just the cap to be coming out. This is just like a eBay or Amazon buy here. It's like a gallon and a half or something and already I'm uncomfortable because I don't like gas very much I used to not worry about it but I've been burned a few times and it freaking hurts it soaks into your skin and burns you saw bad so that's the first fuel related item the second one is you guys already know this if you've dabbled with the v-twin 670 cc motor from Harbor Freight they have a problem where 
the mechanical fuel pump on here is not strong enough to keep up with much more than idling RPMs. So I have this here fuel pump and it's a 12 volt. I think it's a low pressure, low flow. I don't know. I looked into a lot of mud motor forums and it seemed like it was pretty good. So one of the things that also has to be designed is either have a switch on here and have to pay attention to it and turn it on and not have it left on afterwards or I have to be creating some kind of a backflow so that it pushes pressure in and then when the motor's not running or not enough RPMs the fuel will come back and go around and cycle back through so I don't know if the it has to Y off and then maybe go all the way back to the tank. <clears throat> so I'm still studying into that. Please comment if you know anything about that. And people, including me, won't be able to read it after this live is over. So I was thinking about hooking this up to a switch that said nitrous. Just so it kind of is neat. Um, another thing fuel related is... I need some kind of a uh, a safety fu uh, fire suppression system, some kind of a really easy to pull lever that'll release some kind of a, well, I, I guess I don't really need something to explode to put fire out. I, I just have a fire extinguisher out, very handy, would probably be good enough. But so I'm kind of thinking about that stuff uh, along the lines of safety. I also need a kill switch that'll be easy to either turn off by hand or if I was to fall out, it would turn off. I don't think that's gonna be very important as far as falling out because of the way it's designed. But I do wanna be able to shut the engine off if it gets into like a, a run away from home type of scenario where the throttle gets stuck or whatever, which is very possible because I have the uh, throttle hooked up all custom and it's going right by these exhaust lines for now so there's a lot of things that could happen that would stick the old uh, throttle on full go and that would be bad and somebody just commented but it disappeared so I'll, I'll read them in just a sec before you guys go too much farther on the motor, there's a button or a switch to kill switch. There's sort of oil. You can use the kill switch for the oil and remote it somewhere. Okay. Um, I know what you're saying. So it must be a switch that grounds out when there's low oil or too much heat or something. So it's pro it probably grounds out the spark. So I can tie into that and give it the overheated signal and it'll turn off and stop firing. So thank you for that tip. I think that's what you're talking about. And I also ordered from Amazon a switch panel because I love switches and it has like three bomber protected lever switches, like flip up the, the thing and click it on. And then it has a thing to turn from off to on and then a push button starter. And the push button starter is my next thing I wanna talk about because I don't, I, I do have this uh, stock switch here. I took it out of the housing, the very clunky, huge housing. It weighed like a pound and it had a choke lever on it and all that. And I just want something a little cooler to start out with than this clunky, ugly thing here. It is technically a starter switch, but I'm already getting up in the weight. This thing weighs like a hundred pounds and, uh, even a small lawnmower battery weighs like 20 pounds and it's just a lot. And then it's not that bad. I could put it way up here in the front, but then I have to have thick starter cables going all the way back here. And I kind of, I have some 10 gauge trolling motor wires that might work. I have a old pair of used jumper cables that might work, but I'm thinking I might go with a booster pack with like a, I think they're lithium ion polymer 
jumper pack that's just like this big or something and it's for jump starting your car when you have a dead battery and i think i could just put that anywhere and just hook it up you know behind my switch panel even and then have i don't know how long the starter wires can be but i don't want to just start it at the dock and then possibly have to try to restart it when i'm out in the water somewhere so i want to have at least a few cycles or you know chances to restart the bugger even though it's going to run flawlessly and perfect because that's how i roll that's actually a pulse powered fuel pump not mechanical order yourself a replacement pulse pump and replace the stock pump put a switch i didn't read the rest of it so um pulse power meaning like there's some kind of a diaphragm in here that moves back and forth i'm guessing and you're saying to get one that has a little motor I don't know how these work at all. I can definitely do that. I have time for it to come in the mail. So I'm gonna go back and read your comment. Hopefully it'll it'll clear something up for me. I'd super appreciate it. Uh, this is just kind of what I found. It's like a $10 part. I'm happy to replace it with something better. Um, I would like to not have to think about it. Maybe the, either switch it on the beginning as part of the startup suite sequence or have it automatic somehow. I don't know if there's a way to just tie it to the the charging system, if it has a magneto or some kind of something I can just, whenever the motor's running, then the pump is running too. That might be cool too, but oh, it'd be cool to switch it on and hear it go before I start up and stuff. Um, I think that's all I have on that. I have this toaster that I need to do some work on. First of all, there's still breadcrumbs in there. I've blown it out a few times and there's still a bunch in there. I don't know if I'm actually gonna take the time to hook up a lever that will close and open some valves. There's a lot of work that goes on if you're gonna make some butterfly valves in here, you know, like a, a pin in the middle and have it flap and connect and all that. <clears throat> but I am gonna stick with it probably unless I see something at the thrift store that looks a little better here's a stock filter that comes with it and I'm gonna probably just use this one or maybe go to auto parts store and get one that already fits inside of it so it's gonna force colder air from the top instead of from around the engine which is just my my theory I don't know and that's not why I'm doing it the reason I'm using this is because it's big and chrome, and it kind of looks like a air scoop. And I'll, most of the other ways I thought of, you know, this is just a little two barrel carburetor here, one for each side. And there's no real options for prefabbed ones that I thought looked good. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of steel that's the same size as the bottom of this, and then use the stock filter housing it kind of has all of that i might even use some of this i don't know um so it can bolt right onto there and it'll do a lot of the measuring and um give me the the size of the carburetor so i can seal it good and all that and then i thought about having the choke hooked to here and not only closing the internal valves for the choke but also maybe some faux valves up here i think this is going to be plenty enough flow i people were saying that when i went to turn my motor off because i didn't have a kill switch and i plugged the air intake there was a bunch of gas all over my hand and they were saying that could be from too much airflow um so i don't know if it'll help with that or not but i think these this will be plenty of airflow even through this filter because before all it had was like the bottoms of this was where all the air was coming in and the top was just capped off. So I think I'll be good on airflow. This is the uh, stock one here. Anyways, so I got a lot of like tinkering with that to get it to, to work or shit. I should say with this. 
And I also need it to be positioned in a way that it doesn't interfere with any of the linkages. Maybe I'll show you a little bit closer. So you can see here is my throttle link here and below it is my choke linkage. And I have a twist grip, see my hand over here? Twist grip throttle, doesn't move very much because it's still governed, but you can probably imagine how much it would move. And the choke I have right now is hooked up to an old lawnmower throttle, but I don't have it dialed in yet to where it actually, it does kind of move it, but I think I'll do something else for the choke. And uh, like I was saying, these get extremely hot and my cables need to be kept away from it and still functional. This one, you can see it kind of moves the choke a little bit, but that's all kind of easy stuff. I love that I'm dealing with a new motor that has less than an hour on it probably, and I don't have to worry about it actually running. Speaking of hours, this is a RPM hour meter. So it'll show me the RPMs there, and uh, which is zero, and then amount of hours that are run on it, zero. But this has like one or two hours, maybe one hour on it. And so I got to wrap that around one or both of the spark plug wires a few times and then mount this somewhere up in the dash. So hopefully this is long enough. Moving on. These, like I said, get very hot. And I'm considering not capping the back of this. I still have the cutout for this hole here, but it's just like, it's a, a real concern that I have that these are so hot that they're gonna melt this down here and having less of this around, you know, probably isn't a bad idea. Just a quick side note, you can see where my, uh, my stuff is delaminating here. This was a pre-finished, pre-lacquered piece of quarter inch wood. And so this epoxy resin, polyester resin does not stick very good to it. So if, if I ever drill holes through it and stuff, it kind of delaminates a little bit, but you can see it's still flexible after like three years. Instead of the polyester or the, uh, the other stuff that would just be cracky. In here, there's a lot of issues going on here. You can see my U-joint does not have a shaft in it because my shaft is, uh, is bent right here somewhere, right where it goes through the transom because I was moving this and it dropped off of the little the rollers and landed right on here and it bent up and I was barely, barely able to get the shaft out of it. And I'll go grab the shaft real quick. Sorry, old glory. Hold on. So this is a shaft. I have a solid one and a threaded one. And uh, it doesn't quite match up with the new joint knuckle right now because, like I said, this is bent in the middle. So I have to remake this. And that's not too hard. It's just a piece of pipe. And then it has some metal on either side of it to create a hinge that lines up, bolted on there. And then I can hook this knuckle to it here. But it sucks to have to remake it. And I should remake a lot of this. I should just take a all winter to do it right. Here's my prop. It's a 9 inch. 
nine inch prop blur. <laughs> splatter welding, good to go. Yeah, I got a lot of splatter welding going on here. Here's this uh, crescent wrench I've been looking for for months. Anyways, so a big thing I needed help with. Big thing I need help with advice on is this area here because it's going to be I have this kind of as a bearing it's just like a temporary wood bearing uh, thank you Andrew for saying it uh, looking good I've been uh, dieting and watching what I eat a little bit so yeah thanks I'm just kidding I know you're talking about the boat um, but also thanks. And so uh, I have the a solid version of this laying over there and I thought I could make it work, but this one would be a lot easier to because it's threaded and it would tighten up on things. But what I really need is like some sealed bearings or something in here. Uh, what I have set up, I have some Somewhere laying around, I have a thrust bearing. So it has like a bunch of needle bearings or whatever in a circle and you can, you know, push sandwich it and it'll rotate versus the ones that are like a wheel, which I also have on here. So I'll show you the, I have a coll collar here to hold the bearing in place. Um, Here's the type of typical bearing that I'm talking about that doesn't really do me a lot of good in a lot of cases. I can, this fits perfectly inside of the shaft here. So it does go, go in there and keep it centered in there good. But all the thrust is gonna be from the propeller to this shaft for visual purposes propeller to shaft up to this knuckle in here into the shaft of the engine. So in order to reduce that, I was hoping that I could put a, that thrust bearing here and all the forces would be pushing on that via this adjustable nut. Maybe I could weld it in place or something so that it pushes against that, putting at least some of the pressure onto the shaft and into my splatter welded um, angular setup in there that's bolted to the floor that's the engine's bolted to. And uh, I know I've gone over this in some of my other videos, but the more I go over it, the more I can find problems with it. This is Wiseco piston sticker because I have a Wiseco piston right there from a 125cc dirt bike for my throttle lever. No, I will not be reaching up this high uh, for my rudder, rudder, I mean. It'll be right down here. It'll just be like a, not a suicide shifter, but, you know, just kind of a rat rod looking kind of obnoxiously high up there, large uh, thing going on. That brings me to another... Another thing I have going on is the steering. That's my rudder there, or my rudder linkage. My actual rudder is right here, which I still have to fill with epoxy or some kind of a hardening thing. You can see I have a foil shape on this and I have about a 40-60 split on not being centered here from front to back. So hopefully it'll kind of default to staying straight. And it, if I had it too far back, like if this was the front, it would want to flop in whichever way it caught. So this is hopefully going to stay straight and fly true and all that and actually work. And uh, somebody brought up a good point that it doesn't fold out of the way. So, um, but the problem is, is, or the, the saving grace is that I don't actually need this mud motor set up because I'm going through mud. I need it because 
I thought it would be too complicated and heavy to have a whole transmission and some kind of geared elbows and stuff to go down to an outdrive, which would have been in hindsight a lot easier, but really heavy. And I'm concerned about weight in the back here, tipping the boat up like that and whatnot. Oh my God, I have so much, so much more here. We're verging on a half an hour and I don't know if people are even going to watch here. Where's the toaster? Maybe I'll hit the half hour mark and then just stop, stop and then just answer questions. Here's the toaster. I talked about it at the beginning, but I'll talk about it again here in a sec. Um, where was I? Another thing is the whole shape here. Somebody, one of the, uh, one of my subscribers brought this to my attention and I've been losing sleep about it. As you can see, I have a upside down transom, you could call it. So what the fella said was, okay, so this works, whatever. The rudder steers, but when you turn, since you know it's not the typical thing, are these corners gonna dig into the water and want a submarine on me or catch or do something weird? And I don't know what's gonna happen. So I thought of maybe putting some kind of little fins on here, kind of angled up that will also help with getting on plane maybe, or just so when you turn, maybe something out like that, or maybe add a whole piece here, just to where under the surface of the water is all angled in such a way that it won't try to dig down into it. And that might be a completely irrational fear because I might be going at such a high rate of speed that turning is just going to be it's basically on a flat you know how water kind of flattens out behind a boat to where it's like a flat surface um that was very eloquently said i realize this is staring down the barrel of a straight pipe harley sportster 1200 exhaust i don't know if it's specifically sportster if it goes around i did depack it it had fiberglass wrapped perforated tubes inside of it and they actually angled a lot down farther down and I cut them off um, like I was saying I am worried about heat melting my epoxy off so I've dabbled with the idea of putting some heat shields and you can already tell that that looks very ugly but I might just have to do it. It's not that bad, but you know, hose clamps are just not a really good look. And I'm sure Harley guys agree when they put them on their bikes and they're like, okay. So I don't know, maybe I can get away with like tack welding some other ones down here. Or just the other idea I had was just covering either two strips with some stainless steel or chrome plates or diamond plate or just have the whole rear end of it covered and then i can put a hatch in or whatever and i don't need this piece of wood that i cut out and i can see a lot of comments flashing up there so i'm excited to answer some questions here in just a second once i hit the 30 minute mark in one minute and uh let's see what else did i have Oh yeah, safety. I talked about safety. Safety first or last. Just as long as it's there. Mechanical, structural. Oh yeah. You guys been around here for a while. You know that this was a twin motor uh, inboard electric motor driven. And so I still have holes in the bottom of it that need to be patched. So that's just like, an, that's an easy, easy, fun project. And structurally, I don't know, I might do some other things to kind of beef it up. <laughs> Weird thing is I built and designed, quote unquote designed, this to be electric power four miles an hour. So I didn't want to make it any heavier than I had to. But the floor is three quarters of an inch thick kind of making a good backbone for this whole thing. So hopefully it'll be strong, strong enough, I guess is the hope. And um, I might have to peel some of this cock off and redo it to make sure it's 
watertight still, and there's some other things I could tighten up. I need to put a new rub rail on here because this looks hideous. Yeah, just simple things like that. And, um, oh, here, I'm going to show you one more thing before I get into the Q&A section of this. If you guys made it this far, thank you, you're a true fan. I'm starting to enjoy these live videos a lot more than sitting here by myself editing and then over the next week or so finally releasing some kind of shortened condensed version that is just not very satisfying for me. I don't get a lot of views anymore, so this is just a lot more fun. So I'm doing this for the foreseeable future. I'll show you something cool for the very front. So here's my bow, and one of the cool things about the style I've gone with, which I'm kind of a hoarder, junk collector, and I have a weird, uh, non-typical artistic view of things. So I like to just kind of put interesting things like that piston on the steering arm. This is a light that I got from a guy named Dave Draper. It's a bow light actually, it needs to be cleaned up, but I don't know if I'll take the time to clean it. And then on top of that, as I got this, yeah. So I need to hook that up so it's right there in the front. It just looks mean and nasty. I think it's funny too, so I'm gonna keep it there. Yeah, and I also gotta change this because this is re redundant. And so I'm going to put an actual handle probably like on all of my other boats. It just comes in so much handy. So um, one more quick thing. I did drop this. I dropped the back of it more recently in the front of it off of the top of like three foot high uh, sawhorses. And the only thing that happened was I have a, a seam of two pieces of wood here both the toms back. Hi, Brady. Um, it cracked the resin from here all the way down to where the fiberglass ends, which is fortunately above the waterline. But that just goes to show you that kind of confirms what we were all thinking, that you can get away without fiberglass. But if you ever need the fiberglass, it'll stop a crack in its tracks. So that's pretty cool. Um, this side didn't crack it has the same seam going right down here i'll get you a close-up because nobody cares about this part but where is it anyways just kind of a uh, cool because the fiberglass has been a topic of debate whether you even need it or not and i put it on the front and i put it on the bottoms and i don't bother with it on the top because I, the way I do it, it's not very accurate. You can see it doesn't even touch right there. So I would have to fill it with some filler and then wrap it. And then the color would be off. And so I just don't even water it. Um, you can get away without glass. I mean, but if you need it, then it, it helps. I've just glassed the bottom seams. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so I should uh, start uh, reading some comments here, and I won't be able to see anything that you've commented in the last half hour, but let me have it. Let me hear it. The toaster, I can start there. Could put electric motors back in, but leave the gas. Right the hell out of it using, so like a generator, I think. I'm so building a mini cigar boat and I want to use the jets off a of jet ski. Savage 650, a single cylinder, big piston for. Yeah, just beware that you're going to take up a ton of room with that jet drive system. Not only is your engine going to take up about this much room, half of your jet propulsion unit is either going to need to be mounted outside of the boat or you're going to push up a lot of space. So, I mean, that's the only reason that I've seen that it can be problematic so just uh, think about that before you go it would be hilarious to have electric motors 
And then this thing would be full, full RPMs, turning a generator to make these trolling motors go four miles an hour. It would be the biggest letdown of the century for anybody watching it, but it would be hilarious. I'm not sure if that's what you were talking about there, Gupta, but Dr. Gupta, but it would be funny. I build without glass, no problems. Yeah, you can, uh, you can do that. I just dropped mine and stuff and found out that it was good that I had it glassed. But yeah, there's a lot of people that race their boats and, and don't put glass on the bottom. I don't know how they keep it from leaking. I guess use some body filler in that seam or they're just so good that I don't, I don't even know. I mean, I guess if the, the resin will cover the joint, then it'll be good until it did crack, I guess. I don't know how that works, but I put it down here. I don't even have this overlapped very much. It's only two inches high and it wraps under. I can't remember, but I think the whole floor of this is done. It's not junk when you repurpose everything and you can turn it into something cool. My wife used to complain until seeing what I dealt with. Now I can't get her to stop bringing stuff home. <laughs> Sawdust and extra resin in the seams. I get that. Um, but I still don't see how you keep it from getting like that strengthens and waterproofs the inside corner, but I don't see how you get it from soaking into the layers of the side plywood. Probably you were, um, probably you were using marine gray plywood where it doesn't soak up as much, or maybe you use that on the outside too. What about a flame arrestor? Marine gasoline engines need flame arrestor. I didn't read the rest of that comment, but yeah, I'm definitely been avoiding this project for space reasons and for safety reasons because I have kids now and um, you're very close to the engine. Yeah, exactly. I just use epoxy mat on the bottom. Yeah, that works good too. I use the, I think the mat is the stranded stuff that's all like, crazy and I just use the the roving or whatever um yeah my head is going to be right here so that's I mean this thing was already shooting flames out the carburetor when it backfired uh this toaster can handle some of that but I yeah I want a way to just shut everything off kill the fire kill everything I don't know like I I envision my mind pulling the oh shit handle and just a fire extinguisher explodes and puts everything out. Um, then I'll have time to jump out. I don't know. Hopefully none of that matters. Hopefully it all just goes swimmingly. And I mean, it's, it's a glorified pressure washer motor, so it's not the most dangerous thing, but well, you can always get it figured out. Test bench set up and build a purpose boat for it. Yeah, that's a good point. I could build a new boat and I love building boats and don't have room. You need to incorporate the toaster into the name of this vessel. Okay, let's see. It's a Hamilton Beach. I don't know if that would really uh, transfer easily. Um, yeah, it's toaster strudel. I don't know. Ejection seat. Yeah, brave little toaster. <laughs> I kind of don't want to bring too much attention to the toaster. I want somebody to be like, wait, what? That's a toaster? Like, what? Polyurethane coating, strong. It seals everything up. Give the boat a great look. Huh. Yeah, that's that's cool. I can try that. Um, it would be cool to have a clear coat polyurethane. I've been using this oil-based porch paint, and it seems to work but it's not the strongest stuff like over the top of resin you can kind of peel it off with your fingernail my grandmother was the type was the vp of hamilton beach there's something serendipitous there if that's true that's hilarious um please send me i'm kidding but please send me another badge like this so i can even it up on this side I'm kidding, but that'd be hilarious if that was possible. Um, 
Yeah, and it'd be cool because it still says lighter or darker on here. So there's just like some funny things that could happen. Um, hi, Jim. Finally caught my live. So I don't know. The main reason is I was walking through. What do you think about building mini cigar boat using twin jet skis powered by 650? I think it's out of my wheelhouse and it would be badass, but I'd rather have the jet ski in full right now. Um, I don't even fully agree with what I'm doing here. I'm much more of the type to, to cruise quietly, seamlessly, electrically around the lake at four miles an hour. But I also have this wild side of my um, personality that I like doing stuff like this. It's kind of crazy outside of the box. And I don't know if I'll ever go to jets, but it'd be awesome. Need a way to direct heat off rear deck, maybe vents. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm going to start guard boat look, make it long and keep mini still, make it look great. Yeah, there's another guy on here that made a mini cigar boat with a lawnmower engine in here. His name's escaping me right now. And I think he just bolted the out drive off of a, or the lower unit off of a small motor to the bottom of the lawnmower, which was a, a vertical shaft. So, and it worked really good. And he had the shifter still hooked up and it was really cool. I'm thinking his name was Brian Anderson or I don't know. He's on the mini boat show video. It's a white cigar boat looking thing and it's really cool. And it actually moves along very fast. Yeah, it's some way to divert heat off of there. I thought about putting spacers and then a sheet of metal, maybe some diamond plate, maybe something that looks cool, some kind of antique um, grate that goes in front of a fireplace or something like that. Water World Design Mad Max, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I would love, 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 love to have been a set designer for different movies like that where it's like it has to look cool and semi-function, but it doesn't have to be a consumer grade product that's easy to work on and you know i can have a warranty on it you know those set designers they just they can build a house that looks awesome that could fall over in a in a light wind but it looks awesome and that's where i would excel at obviously the engineering in this is not very very spot on but all i have to do is just think like over engineer it and i'd probably be somewhere in the right neighborhood but yeah mad max would be a good uh water world i just watched that like a couple of months ago and saw a lot of 80s jet skis modified with just like pointless bulky plastic sections on there and little guns that didn't do anything and i loved it i thought it was really cool um there's a lot of problems i have with that movie about how they got gasoline and stuff like that but the burt toaster Maybe the burnt toaster. Have you ever considered sail power? Yeah, I have. I would actually love that. I have a very, very good lake around here with usually good conditions for sailing. Yeah, burnt toaster. Yeah. And uh, it would be cool. I don't know if I would do it on one of these. Um, and you really have to get into hull design even more with a uh, sailboat. And that's something I've completely avoided dabbling in, which would be pretty fun, though. I've thought of also using the old umbrella technique like uh, Paul Elkins does. And uh, that's pretty funny. You need to make a small, insane electric boat with insane power and small, no noise and fly. Yeah, I'm ready to build my first mini boat. What would you recommend for a first build? Do you have any plans to share from your builds? I have like, I'm the worst. Um, I have drawings with dimensions of all the boats, not this one. I can get them. I, I've sent them some hand-drawn ones to a couple people if this is the one you're interested in. Also, there's the Model B and the Model C, and that means nothing to you, but um, if you go on my page, the most popular video I have, it has like 2 million views or something, it has a boat I call the Miss Courtney, and I actually have the ability to trace. I built a whole nother one, and I can trace out the pieces so that all you would have to do is cut out the pattern, put it on the pieces of wood and either trace it or spray paint and then cut off the spray paint. And then you have all the pieces cut out for you. Um, but 
I stopped selling those because it takes me a good half hour to make one and maybe 45 minutes to make two, kind of, you know, setting up and stuff. And then I have to find a way to, while I'm normally working, go to the post office and mail it. And sometimes there's customs, so I have to wait in line. And it just became too big of a pain in the butt for how much I was charging, which was $20 plus shipping. And I just don't have enough confidence in it to say that it's worth a lot more than that to everybody. Some people, it's the perfect amount. A couple of the people I sold them to were like, hey, this this doesn't quite match up perfectly, or I tried to adjust it longer and I had to change the plans and now I can't get it to work. And I feel bad about that stuff. So if it was up to me, I could have like a PDF that you could print off and it would print out of life-size pattern. I don't know. It's just, I just don't have a very good... Um, mentality for you know the logistics of all of it um kind of like how i i'm okay at building mini boats but not good at editing videos it's just kind of like eh, gotta run be good and best of luck thanks andrew i hope uh hope you're doing well too and say hi to the missus and i hope your kids are doing good and i hope your boat's doing good i don't know if you ever sent that away from the giveaway or not or what's going on with that but Hope everything's good. Have fun. Good luck. Bye. See ya. And um, I'll probably cut this at an hour. It's Hamilton Beachcraft. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I'm at 45 minutes. Model T, model toaster. I see what you did there. I like that. And that kind of fits because a lot of Model Ts kind of got rat rotted at one point or another. And hobbies are... Fun to sail, buddy. Oh, I would love sailing. Don't don't get me wrong. If you're riding in some high speed boats, the ride can be rough on your rear end. Maybe butt buster, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Backbuster, butt buster, roasty toasty. I like that. Hey Froggy. Um Yeah. I got this horrible seat in here. It's just like a uh I don't know, like some kind of a motel conference room seat. It has padding but very little. But I think I'm going to keep it because it looks like it matches the flying toaster. Oh, we're getting close here. That's a good idea. Some Come jump on the rusty toasty mini boat. <laughs> Motel 6. Yeah, exactly. It's very Motel 6-esque. Yeah, the toaster. I don't know. Like I said, the toaster isn't the main attraction, and I... I've had other scoops on there. This one just had a lot of chrome, and it's light, and it's big, and it kind of, like, matches the size of the boat. So I don't know if I really want to just, like... I could embrace the toaster, but then I'd want to put more toaster stuff on there, so it made more sense, I guess. Um, I could call it the piston bow or the Cadillac or... I don't know. Kick ass, man. Thanks, Rebar. Rabar 77. And, um, I don't know. So, anyways, I also am going to be doing more specific videos on certain parts of this. Um, yeah, a seat with springs would be awesome. I'm not too worried about the waves. I can handle something. I'm only going to be driving this for 10, 10 minutes to a half an hour or something, just enough to go and come back. Thumper lump, thump lumpeter, <laughs> thump jumpeter, stump jumper. Um, another thing is, how am I going to film this? I got to get like a crew with a boat and, um, and multiple angles and stuff to make it worth it, especially if I do crash. And I mean, I want to get as much YouTube worth out of it as I can. The little toaster that could, <laughs> the little toaster that shouldn't. And uh, so filming is like a big part of this that you guys will never really see or appreciate because you're just watching through the lens but it's gonna be really hard to film this and I also need to pick a good place that's quiet as far as waves and stuff but also that I can be loud as far as noise get your buddy from the dock yeah Joe I like this <laughs> where in the country am I um diamond plate 
run behind the scenes crew, yeah. Yeah, easier said than done. People are not as um, social as they used to be. And also, I'm not even social in the first place. I don't really have very many friends. I work with people I'm friends with, but uh, they've ditched me a few times for just going out and riding. So pretty much can count on my brothers uh, if their schedules matter. Um, somebody was just said something I was going to talk about. Uh, yeah, rescue boat, exactly. <clears throat> Dang, I had something cool to say about a comment that just scrolled up. This is n not the best uh, system here. Um, yeah, a drone that followed me would be cool. There's just a lot of stuff. Oh, where in the country am I located? That's what I was going to answer. There's a state called Idaho. It's not Ohio, and it's not Iowa. It's way over towards the West Coast uh, by Washington State. And there's Seattle. I'm going to try to do this backwards. Seattle right here. Then you go four and a half hours this way, and you get to Spokane, Washington. Not Spokane. Spokane, Washington on Interstate 90. Ask Andrew Jones about all this. And then you go over the border into the panhandle of Idaho, and we're not the same state as southern Idaho. We're our own little island up here, right in between Washington and Montana. Um, the place I live in is Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, 83814, if you wanted to look it up instead of spelling it. And about two and a half hour drive north and we hit Canada. Same for hitting Montana that way, maybe an hour actually. And then 30 minutes from Washington. So there's not a lot of mini boat people up here yet, but we're slowly spreading, creeping to where I, eventually I might have more people at the mini boat jamboree and people that would want to help on stuff like this. Oh, here's another thing, windshield. I got to have some kind of a windshield and windshields are like my nemesis. So I've been trying to think of maybe just simple plexiglass one that'll kind of bend to the curve that I want instead of doing the the half um, or the quarter inch plywood stuff that looks horrible and janky, schlocky, and all those other words. Burnt toast. I like that. Uh-huh. That might be the one. Thanks, Brady. That's actually a good one. Burnt toast. <laughs> it's not turbocharged, but... Toaster charge, yeah. I got a toaster charger on top. Adds a couple of horsepowers. Pen hand pen handle of Idaho. It's beautiful. Yeah, you're right. It is gorgeous here. We had uncharacteristically hot heat here. If you lived by me, you'd never get rid of me. Hey, move over here, man. There's a house down the street that's just sold for only five hundred thousand dollars you guys know the housing market right now it's horrible here we're like one of the top five growing cities in the nation so yeah you're probably not moving here anytime soon but yeah it adds at least 20 horsepower i'm going to be thinking of toaster puns and stuff so i'm going to come back at you with some better ones um maybe even after the the choke is done and i flick it off some fake bread pops out maybe not um wisconsin move over here yeah <laughs> no make the plans printable online awesome idea how the do i do that that's what i need to know i want i that's thank you but how how do you make something printable online do i make it printable that they can scale up somehow with all the the like a grid of measurements maybe that's the way honeysuckle beach is awesome or do i make somehow they have to go to a print shop and pay a few hundred dollars for a three foot wide sheet of prints um yes to the fake toast yeah really i thought that was pretty stupid but maybe maybe it's a funny idea like toast is ready ready to rip um yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I really don't know how I can make it printable. I thought about even those ones that you print out 
a hundred collated pages and then you just tape them together, make the lines match up and then you could cut it out. If I could do that, it would be amazing. There was this time when I thought that hand making the patterns would be the best way because nobody would able to be able to just pirate the PDF and steal all of it from me. But now I don't even care. I don't, I'm not making money off YouTube. I'm not making money off plans. I'm, I don't even care about the money really. But for a time I thought about trying to quit my job and do this for a living. And I'm just not an entrepreneur like that. I don't know. If somebody wants to partner up with me, that'd be amazing if you know how to do all that stuff. But, um, yeah. How do you do that? It'd be amazing if you could email me at AmericanBoathead at gmail.com and tell me how to do all of it. And I will just do it. And I will thank you. And if you want to, uh, Sharing some of the profits, we could work something out. If we can just, if you actually know what you're talking about, that would be amazing too. So just let me know. Um, What else? We're getting up close to an hour here. Five more minutes. Buy a wooden boat magazine. Yeah, there's plenty of plans in there. They're a free app that converts drawings to multiple printer sheets. I'll try to research that because I think I know what you're talking about, where you can print out a full-size wall mural on eight and a half by 11 if you just tape them together in the right spot i would i think that would work here too um i just would have to transfer to drawings that would have to be accurate when they print it out which i haven't done because i'm i'm not like computer minded whatsoever i draw things that i want and then scan it instead of like doing a cad which i i have used a simple cad program but what else uh, should I touch on here before I leave in three minutes and 15 seconds? Sorry you're late. I'm almost done, Jimbo. Just need a CAD guy. Are you a CAD guy? I do. I just need a CAD guy, and I just need a guy that edits video, and I just need... Go to center speech might help as well. Is that a fast drop-off? Um... I really need a guy that just loves editing video but has no content and I need a guy that knows how to shut a garbage truck up shut the truck up Um, a guy that knows how the YouTube rhythms work I stopped even putting descriptions on my videos and tag words just nothing I do seems to work very well so if you're this guy who's like super into computers and wish that they had some content for YouTube and thinks that they could make it if they just had some content. Let's partner up. I'll split the profit with you. I'm making nothing. I make 40 bucks a month right now off YouTube views. So, you know, it's just not something I'm too worried about as far as sharing that with somebody else. If they're good at it, we could sky's the limit. You know, I have enough content and ideas. There's been like 20 videos that I've made and just never released because I was on to the next thing and wasn't very proud of my editing. And like, I have endless amounts of videos I can make about this, but then I also have the freedom to not make a video one week if I feel like it. And I don't owe anybody anything. And that's why I don't have a Patreon because I would feel obligated to produce the right amount of videos because people would be paying money and I just don't want to be tied down like that. I have a full-time job and sometimes I'm tired and I need to focus on spending time with my chillins. So they grow up with a dad, which I'm going to go inside and yell at him here in a minute. A minute and 10 seconds that is. And um, I'm looking forward to going back and revisiting this video and seeing some of your comments at the beginning when I wasn't reading them. And I thank you guys for showing up here. And maybe next time I will schedule it and put out, uh, you know, one of those YouTube scheduled live things. And you can more easily get here. You know, I just figured the 5th of July, a lot of people have it off. People on the East Coast are on lunch break or whatever. Uh, it's kind of early morning here. Whatever, that doesn't matter. Um, I do appreciate you guys watching. I really, really like this live thing because I like talking to you guys. You're like my friends. 
and um, none of you have said anything rude on one of these yet. And I actually don't get very many rude comments on my YouTube, period. I don't delete any of them, so go look if you want. And uh, what's your email again? Anyone have handy? It is American Boathead, all one word, at gmail.com. Give the challenge to a high school CAD class to create the CAD file and then take it and profit off of it and tell them this. No, I know what you mean, but that's a great idea. I. No capitals. No, I don't think capitals make a difference on email addresses. I don't know. I think they just go all lowercase. It's definitely all lowercase, but I think you'd still reach me if you tried. But yeah, which is sad because American should always be capitalized, I think. But I don't think in my email address it is. Thy maternal parent. Yeah. You rock, bohead. Hey, thank you, Kimmy K. You probably rock too. And uh, commenting on here means you do rock. And um, anyways, that's my time. Let me know if you think... Uh, oh, and now you can send me pictures of your boat. Yeah, do that. Let me know if you think this microphone is worth it. It would sound more like this if I didn't have it. So let me know. And you're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. I have a lot of fun doing this, so don't mention it. I'm just tr kind of... Yes, Mike is worth it. All right, thank you. Um, just trying to think about my next thing here and tell you guys kind of status on it because some of you keep asking and um, appreciate it, Nick. Um, yes to the mic. Thank you, Shane. Mike is good. Thank you. Yep, yep. Uh huh. And Mike is much gooder. Thanks, Jim. Jimbo. And um, I don't know. I guess I'll see you later. I'll nice to see you too, Jim. And uh, hey, Denmark. Peace out, guys. Gosh darn it! Go build a gosh darn mini boat. Here I go trying to.